Welcome to another episode of Exploring Possibilities on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, journeyofpossibilities.com, and the best of are featured on my YouTube channel, YouTube slash Cheryl Sitz. This is a show where we explore holistic, spiritual ways to transform life for ourselves and our planet. I'm your host, Cheryl Sitz, and today's guest empowers us with a pragmatic approach to spirituality great, right? We'll hear from him, Tom Jacobs, right after a word from our sponsors. Mario Rosales of Tech Life Balance is the creator of the website that we use, this podcast, and you know what? He can help you reach more people and make a bigger difference with technology. Tell us how, Mario. Thank you, Cheryl. You know, one of the things that I've learned, it's this industry of the holistic spiritual field is very different than all other fields I've ever worked with. It, the holistic spiritual field is much more heart centered, which is something that I actually learned even going through my own journey of this. And as I started developing my own sites more in a heart centered approach with helping you with journey of possibilities, man, it, it took me to a whole nother level. You know what? Having learned that I can share that knowledge and work with other people out there. And all they have to do is reach out to me and I can give them a very individual way of connecting with their people because you know I learned how to do it and I'm learning with with your website every day so reach me at marirosales.net or techlifebalance.net and let me know what you would like help on who are you why are you here what wonders and opportunities await you beyond physical death what happened millennia ago to create the damaged earth and fractured societies you see around you Empowering, enlightening, internationally acclaimed, the Joseph Communications books offer answers to these questions. Spiritual, concise, contemporary, non-denominational, the communications originate from Joseph, a highly evolved discarnate spirit concerned for you and the future of the planet and its peoples. The words of Joseph and his soul group give you the power to bring light and change into your own life and the lives of others and to restore the earth. Available in paperback, ebook, and audiobook formats, the communications can be ordered today at www.thejosephcommunications.com and also from Amazon and other major booksellers. All proceeds are used for further publishing and advertising and to make the communications available worldwide. Now for today's guest. Tom Jacobs has been a spiritual leader since the 70s, giving presentations, workshops, and personal consultations across the U.S., appearing on television and radio shows and newspapers, all discussing spiritual development. He uses his training as a spiritual consultant, thought field therapist, emotional field therapist, Reiki practitioner, medical intuitive, blue star quantum healing practitioner, and Adena Energy Medicine to empower clients and enhance their lives. He has, as I mentioned, a pragmatic approach to spiritual living, which is quite refreshing. You'll find him on Facebook at facebook.com slash inner flames and here with us today. Welcome, Tom. Thank you, Cheryl. And I really, really appreciate uh, being on your program. It's truly an honor. Thank you. I'm so glad to have you joining us from across the pond in New Zealand, where it's a completely yeah. different day of the week. <laughs> it truly is. Well, I, it's hard to know where to start with you because you've been on this journey a long time and you've seen a lot and you've seen a lot of change in terms of spirituality and, and how we language that and approach that. How did you kind of come into your own awakening and understanding of something greater than what we've often known through religion? Hmm. That's a really good question, Cheryl. It, and it actually did come through, uh, uh, um, shall I call it a, a disheartening uh, of the religion that I was in. I didn't feel like I could really align with what they were saying. There was a lot of contradiction going on. And uh, I I gave it its its due right. I, I mean, I read and I studied, I talked to people to try to actually align with it. But in the end, it just didn't, it just simply didn't work out. So I started out on my path um, on my own at that point, realizing that there, there must actually be more. And it, 
it, I would look out at, at people going about their, their day and I, and I would see, and I think there must be a greater purpose behind all of this. And, um, one of the things that stood out, uh, significantly for me was, uh, in my religious training, uh, the uh, the thing that made it stand out was where Jesus said that we can do the miracles that he did and even greater. That really inspired me. And so I uh, went on a journey of pursuing how did I work with my energy in such a way as to be able to create miracles. I'm so glad you picked up on that because, you know, I did too. And a lot of us mindlessly go to church and we hear these things and that's not played up by most pastors and ministers that, (laughs) you know, Jesus said, by the way, these things that I do, you can do too, but it's right there in the Bible. It's, it's Mm. like, you know, our calling to step up and be more of ourselves. And what does that look like? And so I can see how that was very inspiring for you. Let's talk about your psychic gifts because they shine through in your work. Have you always been open to that as well? Or did that kind of start to grow as you asked to know more about the purpose behind it all? Well, Cheryl, that, uh, it's nothing that I actually pursued, and I, I I often find the word gifts to be kind of an awkward term because it makes it sound like it's uh, individualistic uh, and that only certain people have it. I'm a true believer that everybody is gifted, and um, it's just a matter of our um, willingness to allow it and not judge it um, that allows these gifts, if you will, uh, to come through. Now, each of us um, has a different perception, and thank God we are. We're different people. So what I may perceive um, through my uh, perception is going to be completely different than what someone else may perceive. So when people uh, come to me for readings, um, one of the challenges that a lot of new readers have is, is doubting their abilities. And I learned really early on to just kind of trust those, trust myself and allow it to be, and, um, not to really question anything that I got because it's just a perception that I'm passing on to a person when I'm tuning into their, into their energy. And it's, to be honest with you, Cheryl, it's a lot of fun. I have never, I never really know what's going to come through. And it's, uh, it just totally always amazes me, just always amazes me. That's such a great way to be with this, though. And I find that refreshing because so many people in this work are very serious. And this is serious work and we've got to be very serious. And and they don't seem like they play and they don't seem like they're having fun with it. And I do think it can be very fun, even and especially some of the heavy stuff. I'm not suggesting that we deny pain or that we don't um, allow it to exist and, and feel it when it's there for us. But it is playful and fun to channel our guidance. And I know that sometimes they've got to be out there shaking their little energetic heads and laughing at us like, boy, they are really lost in it again down there. How do we, how, you know, what are they doing? Absol- absolutely. I couldn't agree with you more. I think, I think I, it's at times I would love to have the perception that my uh, team of angel guides actually have and the joy that they must have in seeing us uh, so squander around this human life that we're experiencing. (laughs) But you're absolutely right. I find that um, it's almost an inner guideline that I have, Cheryl, that if I'm not actually enjoying what I'm doing, then I'm actually doing it wrong. And then I, and, and it was actually one of the very firm guidelines I had when I uh, started to do healings, uh, which um, I called massage because it was more acceptable back then, but I was actually doing um, some pretty in-depth healings. And I always told myself, if I walk away from the uh, table and I feel drained, I quit. 
I will not do this anymore because I knew that I would be uh, that I was actually doing it wrong. That if I am allowing spirit and its in its infinite uh, capacity to flow through me, if anything, I should feel more uh, charged up. I should feel more enlightened, and that's the way that I approach all of the different uh, services that I that I do. Is that I keep a monitor on that to be sure that I walk away now feeling more charged up or or just enlightened and and really energized from the service that I provide it's a it's it people I'm sorry if I'm talking along too much but I find that people like you said are really take spirituality uh, much too seriously and in truthful fact, this is a, in my mind, in my perception of it, is it's such a joyful journey. And yes, there are times of when it's going to be a little bit of a struggle. I've gone through some struggles, but it, it empowers us to um, choose more, to work with the um, work with our energy in such a way that we can actually create more for ourselves. Absolutely. And to to reiterate what you said a moment ago, or to repeat that and emphasize it, yes, if we're feeling drained, we're getting in the way of spirit rather than spirit. I'm, I'm with you. When I'm doing healing work and I'm really open and flowing with spirit, I get so much more energy. I'm, I'm amped up. And if I'm in the way and it's my small self trying to do the work, I get really tired. So it's a quick wake up call. Oh yeah, I'm getting in the way again. <laughs> Mm, mm, absolutely, absolutely, and it's. Uh, I'm finding that as the world, uh, planet Earth, is going through its its energetic changes, and and there's so much information out there um, on the internet and and through different sources that. Um, a lot of people are becoming uh, what what could be termed awakened, and um, now, as you pointed out in my introduction, I got involved in in spiritual um, searching back in the '70s when talking about this type of stuff was simply not acceptable, and um, we kind of were at the forefront of bringing this awareness out to the public and, and actually assisting them through uh, courses, through workshops, through individual private consultations uh, in helping people actually develop and become more aware of their potentiality and their gifts. And now we're f I'm finding that more and more people uh, are finding that they're aware or sensitive, if we could use that term, to energies that are going on around them and not actually knowing the basics of how do I actually work with my energy in such a way that I can be aware but not be affected by energy that I'm, uh, that I'm conscious of. And that's one of the areas that I kind of have a little bit of a desire to assist people with is realizing that, yes, you can have sensitivity. Yes, you can have awareness. Um, but if you if you take it on your in, into yourself and claim it as yours, then you can't in many ways actually be of service to helping anyone. Exactly. That's such a good point. So you're going right in where I knew we were going to go, which is the pragmatic uses for this spiritual information that we have and these gifts that we have, because everybody's so into how do I get more and what can I do and what can you teach me and, and learning and growing more. But if we don't realize that there's a very practical you know, use for all of this and way to apply this and way to manage our energy. We need to spend a little time learning how to manage our energy, how to know uh. what's my stuff and what am I feeling off of somebody else, how to seal up our energy so we're not soaking all that in without realizing it. All those kinds of things that come with all of us, this mass awakening that's going on. And that's kind of what you're talking about, right? Absolutely. Um, I read an article or watched a, watched an interview with uh, Hugh Jackman, uh, and the interviewer asked him about how he developed his acting 
uh, capabilities. And he said he had a teacher tell him at the very beginning that knowing himself was a critical step to being an, uh, an excellent actor. And I thought, isn't that the coolest, you know, approach? Cause I, I think he's a really cool guy. I mean, he's really, uh, got it put together. He's, he comes across really modest and, and just, he's just a really neat uh, guy to watch and listen. And, um, I think that has a lot to do that speaks a lot to do with our, individual journeys as well is that it really has to do with learning to who who am I what are my capabilities and and so critical on this Cheryl is to not um, be conditional or judgmental of ourselves along this journey along this path um, it's it's such um, we find I find in in my interaction with people is that there's a great tendency for people to um, label things and to label themselves and to in many ways pass uh, subtle judgments, which in many ways uh, re- can restrict our capabilities. And um, I encourage people to, and it's been part of my journey, is releasing any form of judgment or any form of of containment and just allowing the universe to be, allowing it to express itself. Um, along the lines of the pragmatic approach, I find, a, you know, a lot of people are, are searching. And, and I can say that in, in, if you're searching, that means you don't have something uh, and, and you're searching for it. Have you ever lost your set of keys, for example, and you look 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 and you, you and for some reason you just can't see it. And sometimes they're sitting right in front of you. They're right on the desk straight in front of you, but you don't actually see it. I think this is a really good example of how sometimes we approach our spiritual development unfoldment is that we're so searching, we put so much intent on on looking for something that we actually don't see that it's right in front of us. And when we relax, when we start to enjoy ourselves, when we laugh more, we all of a sudden say, oh, there it is. It's right in front of me. And I I honestly feel that the more that an individual can relax and the more that we can just simply enjoy ourselves, forget spirituality, forget it. Actually, don't, you know, don't pay any attention to it at all. Just be, if if each of us were simply to be the best person that we could be, um, and even in in that sense, that's even a, a sense of a judgment. If we can just simply be happy and enjoy ourselves along this journey path, we will truly affect multitudes of people because that vibrational energy then goes out like ripples. And, you know, you're walking down the street and if you've got a smile on your face and you're just glowing with enjoyment, it's going to affect the people that you pass by wonderfully. And you, you don't even need to be doing healings. You don't even need to be doing readings. It's Absolutely. a good way to do it. Yes. Simple way to do it. And it's a good reminder that everything that we do is touching other people. So we, we all think we want to, oh, I want to go be a healer and do it. Try doing it at the office. Try doing it in five o'clock traffic. Try being <laughs> in that space in the times when there is the easiest opportunity to make an impact on the energy around us, right? That's a great place to start. I think so. I think, I think um, just like I said, just simply being um, joyful, searching for making my life as joyful as I can be and looking for that happiness for myself and, and expressing that joy. And, and listen, I'm not perfect. I, I get into little, uh, you know, 
tied tied up knots occasionally, but the the difference is is that I don't put pressure on myself about it. I say, oh, that <laughs> I fell off the wagon there, <laughs> and I just I just go back and and refocus myself on on being the joyful being that I know that I truly am, and 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 that the neat thing about it, Cheryl, is that continues to unfold. Um, what I the joyfulness that I am today becomes uh, small as compared to the joyfulness that I am tomorrow or, or f- further on. So it's a it's a really wonderful journey to go along in that in that sense. Now I wanted to bring up a point that that um, you talked about in in the readings and and the uh, healings. One of the things that I do, and I think I don't know if this is different from other people because I honestly don't know, is that I focus on your greatness. I don't focus on um, your uh, your um, struggles that you might be currently having. And I, I have people that approach me and ask for readings, and it, generally they're asking for reading because they're they're looking for something or they want a solution towards something. I always, when I'm doing a healing, I look at you as being whole infinite being that you truly are and when i'm doing a reading i do the same thing i tune into the highest your highest self and that's where it's really fun is that i'm able to actually then see what are the things that you're actually doing that are stopping that infinite um higher self from coming through and and then um, be able to communicate that through uh, different symbols that I draw and the words that I use to be able to share it with the individual. That's what makes your work empowering. And I'm glad that you do it that way because that's where our focus needs to be is on our strengths. So one of the things that I found really interesting in the reading that you did for me, so I did the soul profile and... Mm-hmm. There was an aspect to my past stuff, the way you kind of languaged that was that I'd moved through a lot of it and I'd done good to leave a lot of it behind, but then under stressful situations, it would creep back in and and affect the way that I handled things now and that I can continue to release that. And as you were speaking about that, you used the language, forgive myself. And then you said, yes, yourselves, your past life selves that have gone through experiences that are carrying forward and impacting this. And that was a piece that had been, that I had been missing, that I hadn't been able to see for myself. And I'm really big on getting my own answers as much as possible. But sometimes it's so valuable to have someone outside that, that is trustworthy, that is clear, do a reading because there's pieces that we've missed. And that's really helped me to go back and forgive myself in those other places and times where I know that I was doing the best that I knew at the time. Absolutely. And, and, and I remember, I remember that part of the reading um, uh, that I did for you. And it was, it a lot of times when I'm doing a, a reading, the fun, the fun part that I actually enjoy uh, is, is drawing the symbols, but then actually listening to what spirit says that, the symbol represents. And so a lot of times these words are just words that, that I'm transcribing down as quickly as I can. And, and I remember specifically that, that, uh, you know, clarifying that, that word of forgiving yourselves. And it was actually, you know, with the, with the S behind it to uh, clarify that for you, because it, it was, it was uh, definitely a significant point that, that uh, spirit wanted you to take a look at which is really quite cool and and i think you're absolutely right about uh the, the point that you made is that sometimes you do actually need uh someone that you feel like you can trust to um be able to give you some feedback it's it's i i'm i won't probably say the saying correctly but it's like being so close to the forest that you don't see the trees yes and and that's that's absolutely true it's like we sometimes we're just so close to ourselves that we really don't see 
two things, our potentiality, our infinite greatness that we truly are, as well as what are we doing to trip ourselves up from allowing that to be. So um, having someone else be able to say, hey, listen, you are one magnificent soul and you've got, you know, you've got a really uh, wonderful vibrational energy about you. And for someone else to sit, recognize and acknowledge that is in many ways very healing. And, um, and that's why I recommend that when people get readings that, that I do, I say, don't use this just as a, as a reading reading, you know, cause a lot of people use it just as a, as a, you know, as a horoscope type of thing. I said, use this as a tool, read it over, um, you know, several times over the next couple of weeks. And because something different was going to make, uh, uh, an impression upon you um, as you reread it. And all of a sudden, it's kind of like the uh, uh, the the blocks falling into in, in, in an order. And and all of a sudden, you get clarity on, on issues that you didn't have clarity with before, or an acknowledgement of your greatness that you haven't seen before as well. I love that. Yeah, it was a great reading. I got so much out of it. And one of the things I want to speak to is the fact that you're different from, uh, we're all unique in the way that we approach things. Even if you line up 10 practitioners that have all the same certifications, they're going to bring a different, unique perspective to it. And yours is pragmatic across the board. So you're open spiritually, you're open galactically to the idea of that, that we aren't all from here. <laughs> you're, mm. you're open in so many different ways, and yet you haven't taken off on one of those things and said, this is my area. Instead, you bring all of it equally. You show up with all of it in your full awareness, but you then allow whatever wants to come through and be important at that moment to express itself. And I think that deserves to be acknowledged because that's different than a lot of other practitioners who may be focused more on the galactic or focus more on the off world or the spiritual side. I love that you address all of it in, in the way that you present your readings. Do you want to speak to that? I, absolutely, Cheryl. That's really to me where the the fun part of it comes in. I I just sit down, I tune into the person, and and let whatever, and I mean whatever, just come in. And and it's just it just like I said earlier on, it just blows me away um, when I get. Uh, probably for your listeners' points of view to just assist it, as I, I have a uh, um, an image. What I do is I just sit down and I tune into the person, and then I get images that come to me that I that I draw onto a a chart. And, um, well, chart probably isn't uh, onto an image. And, and I do, I, I keep on drawing all these different images as they come to me. And now a lot of times, or I should say sometimes, I will, as I'm drawing the image, I will get an understanding as what the image actually means. And sometimes I won't. I will simply get the image and I will draw it as quickly as I can and uh, continue to draw images, uh, symbols, I should call them symbols. On, on, um, and I will continue to draw those and then I will go back and depending on where spirit directs me to go, I'll, I will then describe what that symbol is. In other words, spirit says, okay, we'll look at this symbol above her head. I will look at it and all of a sudden words will just start to come to me and tell me what that symbol means. And, and again, that's where, that's where it's just so fun for me because I have no idea some, what some of these symbols mean. <laughs> and, and all of a sudden this information just kind of floods in and, um, I'll be honest, a lot of times, sometimes I'm, uh, the information that comes in is like really different <laughs> and, and, and I, and I, and I'm very kind of nervous when I, 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 I trust myself to, to send it on. I, I, I send it on and then, uh, and then I kind of nervously wait to, <laughs> to see if I, what type of response I get back. And, and it's just been through experience that Tom, you don't need to be nervous. Everything is fine. <laughs> you know, it's a good reading. You feel really good with it. It was, you know, high energy and everything. And inevitably, um, 
it's a, it's a it's a cooperative um, energetic dance in a way of where I'm perceiving that person's energy. They get the reading, and all of a sudden things just kind of blend and mold with them, and they and they uh, resonate with it, and and they communicate back and and give me a little bit of a, a confirmation of how that reading actually um, what it meant to them, and it's just it's just really fun. Really well, fun. the fun comes through, too. I want to share that. The fun comes through, too. So you had this other part in my reading where you talked about how I have a tendency to go off into this other place, and that's actually my true self, and that I'm more like visiting this being I call Cheryl, but I'm really, my true self is out there, and that I tend to drift off there, but then I was not allowed to daydream growing up, so I stopped myself from doing that now, and to spend more time going back and doing that, and I thought, what a fun thing for somebody to suggest that I do. Like, that is a great, I don't remember anybody ever telling me anything like that. So I think there's, that you allow that fun playfulness to come through in the way that you you also transcribe the messages that come with the images that you get. It's it's just been really fun to process your reading and sit with it in meditation and, and to anchor back to my true self, which is not Cheryl in this body at all. <laughs> Thank you. I really appreciate that feedback. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely, it was a very enjoyable doing your reading and, um, and all the different symbols that uh, came through. It was, it was, and, and, um, yeah, and seeing and seeing the uniqueness of each individual too is is such a joy, because it's uh, like I said before, it's like sometimes we just simply don't see our uniqueness and our true self, and this is just a tool to actually help you see that. Well, let's talk about your other tools. So that was the soul profile that I had done. And I also reviewed you on the Facebook page and, and let people know this is a great tool to help you move forward. Just because I walked away from it with some insights that were beneficial for me and also a better understanding and, and kind of a little bit more comfort in accepting the truth of my true self, which is not Cheryl and, and all that that is. And I think that's empowering for all of us. So what else do you offer people and how can they work with you? All right. Well, thank you for asking. Um, there, another really fun service that I provide um, is called a property cleanse. And this is where an individual uh, would provide me with their address of where they're currently living. And then I spent up to approximately an hour um, going through, ooh, I think it's up about 15 or 16 different cleansing processes to bring um, the property that they're living in into a harmonious balance. A lot of us don't, it's something we don't really acknowledge or, or I didn't until I actually started to work with it. Uh, realize how much Mother Earth interacts with us and how much the the um, energetic, uh, again, it's an energetic dance that we're working with, with not, not only the building, the home that we're living in or the apartment, but also the, the Earth itself. And um, we don't acknowledge that. And a lot of times it's not in a balanced state and so that can actually energetically affect us in many ways so it's a again it's a i i thoroughly enjoy doing property cleanses it's a really fun process i i get a lot of symbols that i draw out for the people and i i do both of these services remotely um uh the soul image profile that i did for you obviously you're in texas i'm in new zealand easy enough you you just provide a uh, an, uh, a picture of yourself, and it's the same with uh, you know property cleanse. No matter where you live in the world, all you have to do is provide me with your address, and then I'm able to work with your property in a very unique and and uh, healing way. The other service that I will bring up is I can again do healings remotely. I've done healings for people who've uh, were struggling with some pretty uh, major physical um, illnesses. Uh, uh, one wonderful lady in Texas, another wonderful woman in in uh, Switzerland. So again, the situation is is that someone 
gets a hold of me and says, hey, listen, I, I would uh, appreciate a healing. And what I do is I just I work with uh, uh, probably a team, four different teams of healing uh, entities, and we completely go through your physical body, your spiritual body, your chakras, and we bring everything into as much of a harmonious balance as we possibly can. And then I, I write up a little bit of uh, uh, communication of all the um, insights that I received while I was doing the uh, uh, the healing in itself. And that in, in itself is, is, is a really fun opportunity too. And I really am honored to provide that for people. I think that it's amazing the kinds of healing and the information that's available to us and having our energy balanced and our space cleared. Those are all beautiful services that you offer. And I encourage people to reach out and connect with you because you're a lot of fun to work with too. And Thanks, Cheryl. what would you most like people to know? Like looking back now on this whole spiritual journey that you've had, which has involved a lot Lot. What mm. is one of the big things that you would like people to know that you've learned on your journey? Probably the biggest thing, Cheryl, is to enjoy the journey. If at any point it starts to feel heavy, um, I will go the other direction. I will go towards uh, lightness. And that's what stepping into the light is all about, is stepping into the lightness as well as stepping into the light of spirit. Um, th that's such a critical thing is to go, uh, you know, uh, you know, search out for that joy, search out for that enjoyment. It's not to say that tomorrow that direction that was heavy yesterday won't be light today. So I stay open to allowing things to be and to change and let spirit kind of flow with spirit. And the only way that I can do that myself uh, successfully is by really staying focused on uh, the joy, staying focused on the lightness. Well, and we talked a little bit before the show. I hope you don't mind me sharing. We were talking about possibly even relocations around the energy feeling better somewhere else. So you're even open to saying, you know, it feels better over here. Maybe I need to live over here. So, <laughs> so yeah. uh, kind of following our guidance in that sense too, right? If, if maybe we're done in a place, maybe if it's just too heavy, it's, it's on us to move somewhere or do what we need to do to keep our energy lighter and more joyful. Absolutely, Cheryl. That's, that's so, um, true. It's like the more that we tune into our own energy and the more that we become more of a, aware of it, we'll know that this job feels really heavy. Now, again, it may not I'm not in, encouraging if a job feels heavy, I'm not encouraging necessarily that a person quit their job immediately. And maybe that would work. It would open up energy for something else. But also, you know, allowing yourself to use your sensitivity, to use your infinite beingness to sense, well, where does it feel lighter? Where would, uh, you know, a direction feel? And that, like you said, it's like being open to, um, I'm always just, you know, I'm looking for that, that sense of joy and where I can actually express myself better and be of greater service. That's one of my focuses. And so if I like, uh, if I feel like living where I'm living currently isn't uh, supporting that, then I start to just kind of sense out, well, you know, does that, you know, does it feel better that I move? And if so, where do I move to? And I just kind of play with it. I think that's the point is play with it. it. If you look at children, they have got it made. They go out, they play. If they fall and hurt themselves, they pick themselves up, they cry a little bit, they shake it off and they go off and they they do something else and they, they follow their bliss. And what better way, what a, what a good way shower children truly are. Um, I've got a, 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 a new grandchild and she's just a, a true inspiration to me because you see that 
almost instinctive flow from one thing to another to another of whatever brings her joy. And I think that's really the way to live. So that would be my my recommendation is follow your bliss, follow your joy. And there are going to be times that it doesn't always flow that way, but just pick yourself up and, and follow your bliss, follow your joy again. <laughs> I love it. Great advice. Thank you for that. So do you have anything coming up that you'd like us to know about in terms of special events? Well, um, this is more uh, New Zealand based. Um, I'm going to be at the Mind Body Spirit Fair on uh, Saturday, the 9th of March, uh, between 10 and uh, 4 a.m. And this is at the uh, Civic Center in Lanes Road and Lower Hut. Now, again, that, like I said, that's specifically just for <laughs> people in the local area. Other than that, I'm I'm open to providing. Um, um, any of the services that we talked about anytime, you know, that uh, people feel like they align with me. Tom, I really enjoy visiting with you. You have a lot of wisdom to share and you do it with joy, which is perfect for your moniker to follow your joy. Other than that, I always ask my guests if they have a parting thought they'd like to leave us with. So as we come to the close of our show, is there something you'd like to leave listeners with today? Well, Cheryl, it's been a true joy um, being able to share <laughs> with you this this time. Um, I, pretty much what I said before, just follow your bliss, follow your joy, and get in the practice of doing that. If you start every morning out saying, today I'm going to follow my joy, and always look for that, no matter where you're at, if you're going to work, just look for the joy. Look for that, that joy in what you're doing. And I know, you know, there's good, there's time times and places where you may not think it's there, but it truly is there. Look for it. Yes, it is. I love that. Thank you. And for me, a help has been gratitude. Looking for what I'm grateful for. That's always where my joy is. So those two mm. are really closely aligned. Thank you for that wisdom. And thanks for spending time with us today from all the way over in New Zealand. You've certainly brightened our day. So thank you. Thank you, Cheryl. It's been a pleasure. And thank you, listener, for joining us. What did you think? We welcome your feedback and support at journeyofpossibilities.com slash support. And we'll see you next week on Exploring Possibilities.